If you don't know these five things, then you really don't understand C. And if you don't understand C, well, you don't understand how programs really work. Number one, function calls. What? But that's so simple. No, it isn't. Do you really understand what happens when you call a function? Do you understand the stack and stack frames? Do you understand how recursive function calls work. When you call a function, a chunk of memory is set aside to store the internal details, the values of local variables and so on, of that function as it executes. That chunk of memory is a stack frame and it's added onto other stack frames one after the other as each new function is called, with the frames being removed from that stack when each function exits. That happens when different functions are called, function A, then function B, then function C, and so on. And also it happens when the same function is called time after time, that's recursively. Function A calls function A calls function A, and so on. I have a few lessons on the stack and recursive function calls already on this channel. So if you're a bit vague on all this, go and watch them after you've finished watching this. Number two. Pointers. This is the obvious one, I suppose, because pointers are all over the place in C. And anyone learning C will quickly learn that pointers are vastly important. So what are they? Well, they are definitely not like the little arrow diagrams you see in the books. I sometimes think those diagrams cause more problems than they solve. A pointer is not some kind of magic arrow. A pointer is just a variable that stores a number, and that number is a reference to a location in memory. And like the value of any variable, that number can be changed during the execution of your program. Now let me repeat that because it's really, really important. A pointer variable stores a number, and that's it. Get that so deeply into your head that you no longer have to think about it. Once you understand that, everything you do with pointers makes a lot more sense. And that includes pointer arithmetic, moving through memory or indexing into arrays by adding and subtracting numbers to and from pointers. Now, once again, I have lots, well, quite a lot of in-depth videos on pointers and on pointer arithmetic on my channel. Links are down below under this video. Number three, arrays. Array variables are not pointers. In fact, array names are not even variables. I know that in some books they say they are, but they're wrong. This is something that is profoundly and widely misunderstood. Just go back and look at the comment threads on some of the lessons I've done on arrays in the past, and you'll see that there are people arguing that arrays are pointer variables, and that arrays are high-level structures with well-defined and protected lengths and fixed and inviolable data types. Well, I'm sorry, in C, unlike in some other languages, that just isn't true. An array you call x in your code, by the time it's compiled and run, is literally an address. You cannot assign new values to the array x as you can with a pointer variable, because by the time your code runs, that x, the one you wrote in the code, has been replaced, literally, I mean literally replaced, by a number. So it's not a variable, and it's not a pointer. Sloppily, many people call array identifiers variables, and I'm sure I do it myself sometimes, but we shouldn't. Really, to be accurate, we shouldn't. An array name is an identifier, and it's not a variable. And in the running program, that identifier is replaced, and I can't say this strongly enough, it's literally replaced with an address. Unlike a variable, you cannot assign other addresses to it. Incidentally, you also need to understand how arrays can interact with the stack. In most computer architectures, the stack grows downwards, and if that's in memory, it goes lower and lower, and an array grows upwards to higher and higher locations in memory. And if an array overflows its boundaries, it can overwrite part of another stack frame and cause memory corruption. 
If you need more on this, I have, again, lots of in-depth lessons on arrays. Number four, type casts. A typecast changes one data type to another. Well, doesn't it? Well, sometimes it does, but not always. When you cast an integer to a double, say, the compiler will generate some instructions to convert the integer, that's a full number, to a double floating point number. Now, this isn't the same as using some special purpose conversion function like a to i, for example. Uh, unlike functions, which can in principle be quite complicated, typecasts are really very, very simple things. When you cast a character pointer, for example, into an integer pointer, well, nothing much really happens. Typically, the compiler does not generate additional instructions. In this case, it's up to you to make sure that the operations you perform on that piece of data are appropriate to the type to which you've cast it. The data itself hasn't actually been converted to that new type. So what's the cast for then? It's an instruction to the compiler. In many cases, it just tells the compiler to shut up. Without the cast, the compiler might think you've made an error when, for example, you assign a character pointer to an integer pointer. But with the cast, I'm telling the compiler that I really do know what I'm doing, so just let me get on with it. Don't warn me or, or treat this as an error, because I know what I'm up to. Not that C will often warn you about very much. Unlike most other languages, C will often let you get away with the most stupid things on the assumption that you do know what you're doing. Which brings me to point number five, and this is the most important thing of all to know about C programming. Number five, C won't protect you from mistakes. Now, getting back to arrays for a moment, you can initialize an array with five characters and then write 10 floating point numbers into it. The array length and data type may be correct when you initialize the array, but later on in your program, you are quite free to ignore that. It's generally not a good thing to do. In many cases, it will corrupt your program and may crash it, but in C, you can do it. Whereas in many other high-level languages, well, you simply can't. Now, your compiler may have options that you can set to add an extra layer of warnings or error messages that can help to save you from accidentally messing up your programs. But those are just options. In most cases, C won't enforce any strict checking of your code. And you can do all sorts of damaging and dangerous things. For example, using uninitialized variables, forgetting to allow for the null at the end of a string buffer, null pointers, that is, trying to dereference a pointer with zero value, using a single equals operator instead of a double equals in an if expression, buffer overruns, stack corruption, pointers that point to the middle of nowhere, improper alignment for data types with pointers, abusing the pre-processed structure sizes not being what you think they are due to alignment issues, handling if else statements. Anyway, these are just five things that all C programmers really need to know. There are, of course, plenty of other things that can trip you up too, but master those five things, and you should have a solid foundation for your C programming.